Hello and welcome back to our channel Frugal Queen in France and welcome especially if you're here for the very first time. You might be wondering who is this woman? My name is Jane, my husband Michael is behind the camera. We're early retirees, debt and mortgage free, living a really thrifty and frugal life here in our home in France. And every Wednesday we open our living room up, invite you in for a cosy midweek money chat. And this week is all about budgets and when we just can't make them work. Now before we get into this week's video, if you like everything about thrifty living, money saving, being frugal and stretching every pound, euro, dollar as far as you possibly can, you've come to the right place. I hope you enjoy this video and if you do make sure you hit that like button. But if you're not a subscriber, go on, hit that subscribe button because you don't want to miss our videos. So let's get going with 10 things that go wrong with budgets and what we can do to make them better. Now the very first problem that you're going to have with your budget is it just doesn't work full stop. It doesn't balance, it doesn't add up, you don't get the figures right. Now I've called this section it's not easy because it isn't. You aren't going to get this right to begin with, so please forgive yourself and be easy on yourself to begin with. It will get better. It's going to take you two or three months just to get the food budget right. It's going to get you two or three months just get used to writing things down. It's going to take you a while to make that balance budget each month. It's going to take you a while not to go over your budget. It's just going to take a while. Now, Mike and I have been budgeting consistently every single month for 13 years, and we are still work in practice. It was only just this year that we got enough lines on our different sinking funds to really think about all the variables that could happen in our budget. So there's number one, your budget is going to go wrong. Please forgive yourself for the mistakes that you're going to make and please trust me when I say it will get easier. Now the second reason that your budget might not be working is you're not using a system that works for you. There are so many ways of writing a budget. Mike and I, we've gone analogue. We use a good old fashioned budget book. We even write it in a pencil because if we need to, if we make a mistake, we can rub it out, we can rewrite it. That's just what works for us. We in the past have had spreadsheets, so I used to go and set up this spreadsheet at the beginning of the month and I didn't look at it again. I wasn't opening my laptop. However, if you are somebody who sits in front of a computer every day and that is second nature to you and you like using spreadsheets, use it. If you are somebody who does absolutely everything from running your calendar, to running your social life, to organising your money, to your banking apps on your mobile phone, then an app-based budgeting system might be best for you. Then you might have different systems of how you spend your money. Mike and I do everything with a debit card from one current account. That's the money that goes out. Now you might have different systems of doing that. You might have two accounts with the money going out. You may have several accounts with the money going out and the money coming in, but you need to find a system that works for you. And that includes not just how you manage your budget, but how you physically manage your money, where you put your money. This year is an example. We've taken on another bank account this year. So we had more places in which we could keep our money. It makes it sound like we've got a lot of money. It's not. It's where we've just organised those savings pots. And then part of that system, making it work for you, is when do you do your budget? Where do you do it? And how often? How do you do it? 
So, we have a system, for example, whenever we go shopping, the receipts go in our wallet or my purse, Mike's wallet or my purse. Then when we get home, we actually have a peg, a good old fashioned clothes peg on our budget book and the receipts straight away get onto that peg on our budget book. And the next step is that we write it in our budget book and we balance it. We take that away from our sinking funds. For example, if we have 250 in our sinking fund for clothing and we spend 50, we know the balance is 200. So that is what I mean by having a system that works for you. Now most of these ideas today come from the fact that I put a question out on our Facebook group, on the Frugal Queen in France Facebook group, of what are your problems with budgeting? And one that often comes up is the fact that some people have a variable income. We know we have a variable income. And there are solutions to that in how you budget for a variable income. And the first one is on a good month, you have got to save more. You can't think, oh, well, I've got a good month, I can spend more. No, you absolutely can't. That is the month where you need to be putting away a much, much more. The second thing that you need to do with a variable income is you need to budget for each month as a unique month. And that goes for everybody, whether you have a variable income or not, or pretty much the same income, or actually the same income all of the time. You have to write a unique budget for every single month. Now, the next part is, if you have a variable income and you have a low income month, you may have to face up to the fact that you've got absolutely no discretionary spending. Worst case scenario of that variable income, you may earn under the minimum and that is the case where you may have to draw down from those savings that you put aside on the good months. But my advice is this, is you only use those savings to pay for absolute essentials. So there we are, if you have to budget for a variable income. None of it was good news, I'm afraid. And I know that because I live with that very variable income. So there you are, you've done your very best with your budget and then something comes along that you hadn't planned for. And people would call that an unexpected expense. So how do you get around those unexpected expenses? We need to really think long term with our budget. We need to think of everything that we're going to pay for in a year. Now, Mike and I, at the beginning of every year, sit with an entire year's calendar we go through every month. The first thing we do is we put in all the birthdays and significant dates. We might have proposed travel dates. We might have times that we say, we're going to take a break then. We might need to have some extra money then. We obviously know about Christmas and birthdays, but we're putting in everything we possibly can in the calendar. When is the car service? When do we pay for our refuse and recycling bill? When do we pay for our house taxes? When is our income tax bill? So we're putting that into our calendar. When the children were young and at home with us, obviously we were putting in term dates. We would make sure that we would ask the school in advance, are there going to be any school trips this term? If these days, school calendars are on the school website. Schools are obliged to have that school calendar publicised somewhere. They would be foolish not to, they would get far too many complaints. And you need to be in communication with your child's class teacher. What's coming up? There's also those rounds of things that happen every single year in British schools. We have Comic Relief called Red Nose Day. We have Children in Need. We have Christmas Jumper. We have all of these things that fundraise throughout the year. We have Book Week. We have Poetry Day. We have Sports Day. We have the Swimming Gala. We have the school trips. We have the residential trips. They're cyclical. We know when they're coming up 
ask the school when they are, get them in your calendar and you can prepare that. Also with your children at school, they're bound to be asked to come along to birthday parties. Factor that in, even if you just think, well, I'll put aside three pounds a month for a birthday party for something from Poundland and a little card or just a card and a bar of chocolate. At least you've got something prepared. So things aren't unexpected. They won't just come up in your budget and trip you up. Be better prepared. Don't let poor planning let you down. carries on for my last point really and this is another aspect of where budgets can go wrong and they will get better so please like I said earlier on don't beat yourself up over this you know give yourself some grace over this and it's the biggest mistake that people make in the early stages and we did this in the early stages is where people don't budget for absolutely everything if you've got a dog, your dog might need to go to the vet and might need medicine. That's something that's got to go in the budget. If you've got garden tools, at some stage you'll be digging the garden, you'll put it in the ground and the garden fork will break. Things will break. So having well set up sinking funds, sinking pots, an emergency fund, all of those things really do do help you. But you've got to budget for absolutely everything. Random things that you might forget, haircuts, new shoes, everything needs to be a line in the budget or it needs to be somewhere that's going into savings. And sometimes you're saying, oh, I will save this much money a month. We were doing that and we just tuned that a little bit more. We now have 10 different sinking funds and it just made it more defined for us but as I said in the beginning you won't get this right to begin with you will work on this and you will get better at this but it is a big thing that people make mistakes of that they don't budget for everything so each month when you're having a budgeting meeting with each other ask yourself what else do we need to get in this budget what else could possibly go wrong this month because let's get it in this budget so there we go the big mistake people make is not budgeting for everything but just keep working at it and adapting your budget every month. Now another big problem with budgets and the problem that people have with their budgets is sometimes people forget what's written in it or they forget they've even got one. And off they go to the supermarket or after they go to the shops and next thing you know they've spent a load of money and it wasn't in their budget. So what do you do to get around that? With anything new, you need to revise it and rework at it. Maybe you need to put your budget absolutely front and center where you can see it all of the time. Something that you might need when you go out of the front door is some kind of memory aid, some kind of visual aid on the door, you know, check the budget, check the bank balance, check the bank account, check it. So you might need to do something where you remember your budget all of the time. Now, one way that people get around this is they actually physically draw out the money and they only take that money with them. It's a great way of doing that. If you have a shopping list, make sure that you write on the top of it how much money you've got for that week. If it's 60 pounds, dollars or euros, write it at the top. Go over it with a highlighter pen. Make sure that your shopping list would realistically fit into that budget. So get yourself some kind of visual aid. Get yourself some kind of budget reminder. Stick it where you can see it all of the time. Maybe it's on the bathroom mirror. Maybe it's on the door inside the porch where you come in. Check the budget. Maybe you carry your budget book around with you or you have a shrunken version of it. You might have a small notebook version of it, but you will forget it. You won't just remember these things. And the way to get around that is find some kind of way of reminding yourself before you ever go to the shops how much money you've got in your budget for whichever category you're about spending and remind yourselves 
even if you're going into a shop, look, we've got 60 pounds for food, we've got to stick to this, we've got 60 dollars, we've got 60 euros, that's it. So let's just remember that. Hope that helps you. <laughs>
you've got to budget as a family and as a couple you've got to budget as a couple and you've got to be on board and stick to it When we reflect on our own budgeting skills and how we've worked on them and how we've improved upon them, one of the big things that we had in the past where we made mistakes and maybe people continue to make mistakes is all of our budgeting was very short term. We just were not putting enough into savings and we have really worked on that and we've changed that really in the last two years. So this section I would call paying yourself first. And what do I mean by that? The first line on any budget should say savings. We decide a nominal percentage. You can choose however you're going to do that. If you have a set income each month, you may have an amount of money that you decide every month. Maybe you decide as a family, every single month we will put 50 pounds, dollars, euros into long-term savings. We decide as a couple to put 10% away. It's just the way we do it. The second lines on our budget are our short-term savings. So our first line, our 10%, is our long-term savings. We put that away. Our second line on our budget are our short-term savings. Some people call those sinking funds. Some people call them savings pots. And some people call them just short-term savings. But there we go. It really does help you with your budget. Stop making those mistakes. When you start thinking of the long term, you pay yourself first and you put the money into savings. We've got to number 10 of my budget is not working. And it's that big word, and the word I'm going to put in here is inconsistency. And we're back to human factor here, aren't we? We are only humans, we do get things wrong, it's okay, we fall down, we get up. We fall down 10 times, we get up 11 times. But it is the fact that we do need to be consistent and get back to the plans that we made. That we all need to run our homes and our families and our budgets and our finances in an organised and timely manner. The opposite of that would be a chaotic manner. We don't want that. So we have to be consistent to make this budget work. And that means consistently tracking, consistently checking our budget, consistently checking our balances, consistently making meal plans, shopping lists, sticking to it, checking our diaries, and organising ourselves, like I said, in a timely manner. And it's not easy, which is what I said in point number one. And as I've just said now, you will fall down 10 times, you get up 11 times, but you consistently come back to it and then it will become habit and it will work eventually. Budgets are really tough to keep to sometimes and I hope just some of those strategies there could be of any help to you. If you've enjoyed today's video, go on, give it a like. If you're not a subscriber, would you consider being a subscriber and hit the little bell notification so you don't miss our videos. Just leaves me to say on behalf of Mike and I, thanks so very much and I'll see you again soon. Bye!